Hi, welcome to Metal Rolls TV, where the underground meets the playground. My name's Josh Williams. I'm Jeff Rappaport. Brian Bali. And, uh... Oh, hey, was that the doorbell? Yeah, I think it was. Jeff, why don't you go see who's at the door? I wonder if it's one of my neighbors. <laughs> You don't know how to put on your own cardigan no, that I, you wear around the house whenever a, you're home and it's comfy? It's a new cardigan. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on. Hurry up before the land of make-believe leaves our place. Of, uh, Seems to fit perfectly. We should have that band on the cardigans. That's a horrible idea, Brian. <laughs> we help button me up, Josh? Nope. Come on. Uh, just the top button. I don't want you to hulk out. <laughs> Plus it looks more, it's tougher, like Pato. They wear they wear the yeah. top button. Yeah, that's in the barrio. Tough. It, who? Yeah, it's not working. You're just too buff for this cardigan. You need another size or two bigger. Come on, Brian. <laughs> what? Yeah, Brian. It's already going way longer. Come on, people are waiting <laughs> at the door. Let me yeah, just put this there. thing up. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Hurry, Vamanos. Who's at the door? Hey! Hey! Are you guys my neighbors? <laughs> we are. Hello, are neighbors. neighbors. Oh, hey, Look who it in. is. <laughs> That's Tim Blackman. Hello. Hey, Chris Brown. It's funny we never met you before, but you do know our names. <laughs> yes. Here we are, my neighbors. Jeff's neighbors. Yes. <laughs> we are neighbors. Thank you, sir. Come on down. Come on can in. We just, can we just come in your house, even though we've never met you before? <laughs> sure. You are neighbors. We can well, trust you, right? For Right time for a beer chubby party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Where's the new neighbors? And let's Howdy. We, we opened the beers and uh, got them ready for you. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Come sit closer. Oh, We're neighbors. Close. <laughs> 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 you guys pour me a half a glass. Of water. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're all right. So welcome, Chris and Tim of Faith or Fear. Crash band from the late '80s, early '90s, and now. 2000 and what, 12 tens? What is that? Yeah, that the 12, 2000s. 12 teens, we're in the 12 teens, almost. We're in the teens. Uh, let's start with history, I guess. Because I'm going to start okay. at the very beginning and try to recap everything. There's a lot to go over, but. Uh, so you guys came out in the prime era of uh, Thrash. Yeah. And um, very early on, you guys got approached by a management company. I was wondering uh, if you could talk about the process of, like, you know, did they call you up? They see you at, your show, see you at a show? How they find you guys? What's the uh, what's the quick story of that? It, um, we we started playing a few shows up in Philadelphia, Northeast Philadelphia, with a band called Anvil Bitch. Yep. Um, great, great guys. We're still super tight, still good friends with them till to, to this day. But uh, the first few shows we did with them, uh, they liked us right away, and they immediately offered us a few shows to play together. Cool. Uh, and what we did, we reciprocated. So not only did we do a lot of shows opening up for them in Philadelphia, we had them come down to where we were in Vineland, South Jersey, in that area, and play a few shows with us. Vineland, Atlantic City, like in that whole South Jersey area. Right. Um, and they had a manager at that time uh, named Sean Tierney, who, uh, if, unfortunately, I think I heard he's passed away recently. Oh, that's a shame. Um, yeah. Uh, and he was with a company called Golden Guru Management. And... Uh, few shows we opened up at the Empire Rock Club in Philly for them, and that's about all it took. The management company right away heard, oh, there's a band that's opening up, it's really good, drawing a lot more people to the shows. And uh, that's it. Well, within a few months, they were calling us in for contract negotiations, mm -hmm. and there if you guys sign with us, we'll make sure at some point you have, you know, if, if not a major label, a major independent label behind you. Uh, and we'll we'll prove to people that you guys are really attracting a lot of attention in Philly, which at the time was, if, if it's not still, one of the ten biggest cities in the U.S. So, um, there it is. There the, yeah. It's, and then soon after, you guys have uh, your track "Dehumanized" featured on Metal Blades Metal Metal Massacre Nine right? compilation, right? Exactly. Um, and then not long after that, guys are on Combat Records and releasing "Punishment Area." Yeah, there was almost. There was almost. Metal Blade was in there for a while, right? Well, yeah, as part of the compilation. Was that Brian? Brian Slagle, yeah, and who's, who's still the owner of Metal Blade. Metal Blade label, pretty big label still. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was a big deal because a lot of the bands we liked, if they weren't on Combat, they were they were on Roadrunner or, or Metal Blade. Metal Blade, right. So all of a sudden, Metal Blade taking interest going, we like that song, we want to put it on a compilation disc and 
back then, as probably even now, you realize a compilation disc on a, on a decent label, that's your segue. Sure, it's, yeah, it's it brings bring you into a bigger audience because the, sure. the label's already got uh, an established crowd. Exactly. Yeah. They were actually a lot bigger back then, like the compilations, because there's so many of them now. Sure. But back in the day, if you were on one of those compilations, it was really something special because there, were, there weren't quite as many as there were. There were just a few every year as opposed to like dozens a week like there are now. Yeah, sure. so much yeah. stuff going on. Sure. Yeah, I mean, back then we were, we were a thrash metal band in, in, in a lake of 10,000 other bands in the world. And now when I look at the, the ocean... Right. Uh, of hundreds of thousands of bands, it's it, it's fantastic, but uh, the internet is a blessing and a curse. It's yeah. it, right. if you if you're careful and you work hard, you use it to your stand advantage. out. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, and now it's uh, it's got to be next. To, I mean, it's yeah. it's a real right. At the same time, you're you're open to the entire world where maybe you weren't before, and then mm -hmm. now you're also competing with the entire world. Right, right? sure. Yeah. But you didn't have the avenues back then. So back then, if you were part of that little lake of bands. You only had a few few mediums to make that happen, and that was magazines, radio, uh, and and just playing live shows and whatnot. So, right. so it was a lot harder back then to try to get yourself known. So luckily, if you were able to do that today with the more with the social media, it is a lot easier. I mean, and I'll say that for even for us now. Thankfully for us now, if it were, wasn't for Facebook and for other social media things, a lot of people wouldn't. Wouldn't even know that we were back together trying to do something. So, sure. Um, I, I certainly don't knock it. I'm very grateful for it. Can we take a quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> hey, look at me.